Hello and welcome to a very wet garage of dad. Today I'm going to tackle the near side front wheel bearing and the way I know it's the near side front wheel bearing is it's when you go down the road it's very noisy, a very distinct sound of wheel bearing and if you turn to the right if it gets louder then it's the front left and if you turn to the left and it gets louder it's the front right but also I've already had the hub off on the other side and it's okay so it's definitely this one. Now I'm not a qualified mechanic much more of a, a home mechanic, but a home mechanic with over 40 years experience. And a lot of my videos are not definitive how-to videos, but how I, how I manage to do all these jobs, you know, on an meagre budget, in a small garage, often outside, in all weathers. So this is probably borderline this one, because you're better doing it with what they call a Gen 2 tool, which is a, a proper tool to take off the hub and the bearing. But I've done many, many, well over 30 wheel bearings with the old Heath Robinson hammer method. So hopefully I'll be able to sort this one too. Anyway, enough of this waffle. It's pouring rain, so I'm going to shoehorn the Audi in the garage and get on with it. Another way to tell if you've got a failed bearing is to get a hold of the top and the bottom of the wheel. In my case, just the top. Just rock the wheel to and fro. You can hear there that I've got a faulty bearing. Well, that could have been the quickest fix ever because the actual nut was slack on the end of the hub. But there are sort of red deposits on there and I'm not going to take the chance on putting a new nut on just. So I'm going to take the hub off and double check the bearing anyway. To get the hub off, just keep it on the ground and I've got a 36 millimeter socket just to slacken the nut. Because I only had an iPhone at the time, I couldn't really film how I took the CV joint and hub off. It also turned out to be quite a difficult job because the CV joint was really stuck inside the hub. There are other videos on YouTube that show you taking a hub off in more detail, but I'm just going to show you step by step how I managed to get mine off. So you begin by taking the hub nut off, take that off all together, then get in and take the two bolts out the back of the caliper, take the caliper and the pads off and hang the caliper up into the springs there. You then unscrew the little screw that holds the brake disc on, take that off and there's three bolts that hold this shield, dust shield on the back, you take those bolts out. You then get in and take the ABS sensor out and the brake pipe off the bracket and take the bracket off and hang that up out the way as well. Once you've done that, you take the nut off the track rod end and you tap this part of the track rod end, rod end with a, a hammer and that eventually pops down out the way. Same with the wishbone bush, you take the nut off, put a long lever between the body, the hub and the wishbone, lever down tap on the hub part and it eventually pops down and out the way. You then take the bolt that holds the hub onto the shocker, take that out altogether. And then tapping on here using a, a wooden block to tap the CV joint out of the hub. But this is where I had a few problems in that it was really solidly into the hub and I couldn't shift it. So what I ended up doing was taking the the half, the half shaft off and the shaft is bolted onto the gearbox with six hex bolts. Once I got that off I had to take it onto the bench to get a real good bit purchase to get the CV joint out. And finally hammering down in the hub, pull it off the shocker and out the way. After a couple of hours of hard graft, finally got the hub off and the CV joint was absolutely welded into the, the bearing. You can see by the, the bearing's actually shot by the way, but you can see the heat created must have just welded it on the CV joint. So after a lot of strategical whacking, I managed to get it out, but I had to take the half shaft off and get it on the ground to get some purchase. 
and also a few strategically placed blows on the bearing. Three in fact, I got it out. That's all the components off, they're all rubbed down and coated with a coat of Q-Rust. I use this stuff a lot. So I'm going to tap quite firmly, making sure at all times that the bearing is going in parallel onto the hub. There you go. Perfect. Putting it all back together is just reversal of taking it all off. There is a good video on YouTube showing you how to do this, which I'll put in the links below. It always amazes me the amount of tools you need to do jobs in cars. But that's it all back together. I've rubbed down and painted all the components and the shield, the discs and the pads are pretty new anyway and there's also a new nut on the end of the shaft which I'm going to torque up in a minute So just before I put it down I'm actually going to spray it with this stuff here and it puts like a very thin waxy film on well, You obviously keep it off the, the brake discs but you can spray all the components at the back there, you know, over all the nuts, all the electrical things, you know, even on the springs. And apparently it's good for the, the whole of the winter, so I'm going to do the whole of the underside of the car with this as well. There, that's it all back together. And there's no play whatsoever rocking top and bottom. If you rock it side to side and you've still got a bit knocking, that's a different thing altogether. That could be a trap rod end or a bottom ball joint, but this one's fine. Well, I'm pleased to say that that was a great success. The car's lovely and quiet again, and by doing it myself I've saved over 250 quid from buying a specialist tool. But the worst part of the job was getting the old CV joint out the, out the hub. It absolutely welded itself in and I had to real hammer it to get out. But the old bearing came out and the new bearing went in really well, so I was really pleased about that. If you've got any questions about this video, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thumbs up, please subscribe, there'll be more A2 videos coming along very soon. Sound a wheel bearing, but if you turn to the left, and if you turn to the right, and it gets louder, it's the left hand front, or if you turn to the left, and it gets louder on the right, it's the...